so welcome back to the Educator. I'm your host, Dr. Robert Falconouet, and today we have a very special guest, the Rector of St. Paul's College at the University of Manitoba, Dr. Christopher Adams. That's it. Thanks, Robert. Nice to have. Nice to be here. You've just written a new article in a book, yeah, uh, talking about Aboriginal voting patterns mm -hmm. in, in Manitoba. I was wondering if you could just discuss that a bit. What you sure. Uh, the book is called You 2011, and it's about the 2011 provincial election in Manitoba. It's edited by Andrea Rounds and Jared Wesley, two political scientists who are here at the U of Manitoba. And they asked me to do a chapter regarding polling data and Aboriginal voters or Aboriginal uh, um, citizens in, in Manitoba. So what I did is I took some data from Probe Research, which is a company I worked with for many years, and I took this data set and I ran the data on people who are self-identified Aboriginal people and what they had to say about their political party preference. And what I did initially was I took the data and I said anybody who said they had a preference, I set, sat to one side in the data set, and anybody who said they have no preference or aren't even leaning to any party, I took those out of the data set. But of the people who said they had a political party preference, regardless of whether they vote or not, of the percent who said they had a political par party preference, about three quarters of Aboriginal people said that they do have a party preference, regardless of whether they vote or not. So I c compare in this chapter the, the level of political engagement using the measure of having a party preference. I took that percentage and I compared it to the general population. And it's about the same, about three quarters of people who are of the general population in Manitoba say they have a political party preference, Liberal, NDP, Green, or Conservative, and three quarters of people who are self-identified as Aboriginal said the same thing. So it's a quite a powerful data set we're able to run. It's about uh, 1,600 people in the data set who are self-identified Aboriginal mm -hmm. people. And uh, we found that that was an interesting figure. Then we took the data or I took the data, and I broke it out among people who say they're Métis, people who say they are First Nations, and then within the First Nations community, I broke it out into those who said they're primarily living in a, in a reserve or on a reserve, and those who said they're primarily living off reserve. I did some comparison of the data there. And uh, your data, uh, that's actually fairly unusual, I would think, that uh, three quarters of average people would have voting preference. You, it's often when we think about Aboriginal people, they don't have, not involved in politics, they're more involved in your reserve politics or things to do with their community, so it would be something I wouldn't have expected. Yeah, I mean, it was a surprise to me, it was a surprise to Mary Agnes Welch, who, who did a recent article in the Free Press on this very topic. What, a, what it is, is, in part, is that there are different levels of political engagement. And as a political scientist, we know that to have a preference, it doesn't cost you any effort to have a preference. Uh, to go out and vote is a little bit more difficult. To go to, uh, to write a letter to a member of parliament is even more difficult. Right up to um, actually running for office or going to town hall meetings and things like that. So to say that you have a party preference is a very, very basic level of political engagement. So that's part of it. What the real challenge is for people in government and elections in Manitoba and for our community leaders is to try to make sure that people who are interested in politics can get a chance to get out to vote, can get rides to the polls, can be reminded when it's election mm -hmm. day, uh, make sure that they're properly informed. So that's the real challenge. Now, uh, would political parties naturally be inclined to have more people participate, or would that be a better thing to have less people participate? Uh, well, it depends. <laughs> uh, if, if you uh, if you're conservative, in many ridings, you, our data show that, let me back up a little bit, the data show that in Manitoba, First Nations people are overwhelmingly supportive of the NDP. And so in ridings that would be swing ridings, like in the Interlake, it'd be in the interest of the Conservative Party to have fewer First Nations people showing up to vote and, and uh, more people who are outside of the First Nations community. If you're NDP in the Interlake, which can be a swing area, mm -hmm. if you're NDP by, by George, you want to get those people who are First Nations out to the voting station. And so in your research, you found that three quarters of Aboriginal people prefer the NDP majority? No, uh, uh, three quarters of Aboriginal people say they have a party preference. Okay. And then, and then the research, uh, as reported in the Free Press and, and in this book that's coming out, 
Um, the, the research shows that when we look at First Nations people, when we set aside Métis and, and uh, a few other small groupings, that First Nations people are, are primarily interested in supporting the NDP. Métis people, on the other hand, uh, Métis people kind of straddle between the general part population and First Nations community in terms of their party preferences. So you see stronger support, not overwhelming support, but stronger support for the progressive conservatives among Métis people than uh, First Nations. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Probably related to they're more perhaps more integrated into society. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, there they're are a lot more people in Manitoba who, who say that they're Métis because they have mixed heritage. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean that they're a member of the MMF, but it means that they, they say that they're, they're Métis. That's part of it. But secondly, Métis people, because they're, they're non-status, to use the federal government label, because they're non-status, they haven't had that, uh, um, that the level of marginalization from the rest of society. So some would say assimilation. But the, the Métis people have, have had the vote since for all time. Um, uh, First Nations people until uh, the, the 50s and 1960 federally, the, 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 the First Nations people have had to give up their status if they want to vote. So there's a different political history of the of the two populations of First Nations compared to Métis. Now, were the Aboriginal people uh, in their voting preference uh, liable to change their vote? Uh, we didn't ask that. We, we, uh, we just looked at where they were in, in uh, between in the period of time in which we gathered the polling data was between 2007, or, no, sorry, 2000, 2008 and 2011. And so that was the period of time we were asking them, if an election were held today, who would you vote for? So there was a quarterly poll where we grabbed them about 50 to 80 people each wave, and then we pooled it together. We did ask, uh, who did you vote for beforehand? So we don't know where the voting, mm -hmm. the voting switches might have occurred. But there's another, um, there's another research paper that I did with my friend uh, Lillian Bergall in Saskatoon, and it's posted on the MIPR. There's a plug for the Manitoba Institute of Policy <laughs> Research. But we did an analysis of the 2000, and, I kind of remember my provincial elections, 2007 provincial election. Mm -hmm. The two, 2007 provincial election, we analyzed the impact of, of uh, Aboriginal candidacy and voter turnout. And we, we, sh we showed in that paper that there is, uh, that First Nations people in 2007 were, were overwhelmingly in support of the NDP back then. So if we compare that research paper that's on the website of MIPR, um, if you look at that paper, you can see that there hasn't been a big change from that 2007, ele uh, 2007 election to 2011. 